Community Foundation. Oh, and we're going to record because people will zoom in for it. So um, what we'd like to do today is have a conversation about voting system integrity and turnout in Chester County, most definitely. And uh, we are joined by Karen Bowsom, who's the director of uh, Chester County Voter Services. She's got a little bit on her plate right now. Um, so uh, what we'd like to do is actually start with a brief video that uh, was on just late last week from the League of Women Voters about um, voting system integrity and just voter turnout. And then turn it over to you, Karen. We have some slides to go through and some discussion to have. Does that work? So actually, thank you for sharing the screen and let's see if we can get the Zoom rolling for, it's just, I think a four minute video. I can see it on the screen, but I can't hear yeah, please, it. You're muted. Hi, Bob. All right, here we go. For Amy Weinstrom, Executive Director for the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I know that you are laser focused on voter turnout and Donna was talking about just how critical your state is. How is your message being received by women in your state? So first, thank you very much for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Um, um, as is uh, coming across the, the country, actually, I think that our work it is resonating with everyone, but particularly with women. Most of our members and subscribers are women. Um, and lots of people think the League of Women Voters is only for women, which isn't true. Um, so we are um, laser focused on getting our, our base um, engaged and active registered to vote and to the polls on election day. And the majority of those people are women in Pennsylvania. When you've been talking to some of these voters, has there been any issue that's maybe surprised you that is important to that voter base specifically? Well, I, it probably isn't that surprising actually, but um, reproductive freedom, um, which is an issue that the League of Women Voters um, advocates for. So, um, you know, having autonomy and privacy and healthcare decisions is an issue that's resonating um, across the Commonwealth. Um, we hear it at our events, um, but also frankly, um, just the state of democracy and ensuring that everyone has the right to vote, every vote is counted, mm -hmm. and that we have faith and trust in our system, which is um, something that as we are uh, sort of really, like you said, laser focused on in the state of Pennsylvania. You know, and to your point, many analysts say whoever walks away with Pennsylvania will win this election. There will be all eyes on your state come November. What would you like people to know about the security of the elections overall? Yeah, so it is the case that the winner of the presidential election has carried um, Pennsylvania in 10 of the last 12 presidential races. So it is an important state. Um, I would like voters to know across the country that the the integrity of the voting system in Pennsylvania is strong. It is secure. Um, there are a host of organizations that um, are, are watchdogs and safeguards of the process, working closely with our counties, our Secretary of State, and our Department of State. And so folks should know that the, the, the voting process is safe and secure in Pennsylvania, and that we'll work very hard to make sure every vote is cast by eligible voters and that every vote cast is counted. I think it's important for folks to know that um, it is likely that we won't have results on election night in Pennsylvania, <clears throat> people, but we've seen a huge increase in the number of mail-in and absentee ballots in, in Pennsylvania over the last um, four years. Uh, and so we need to make sure all those are counted and counted fairly and accurately. So there might be a little lag time, um, but that is not because there's anything wrong in the system. It is to make sure that every vote is counted and um, we will make sure that happens. Well, let's zero in on those mail-in ballots and the drop boxes uh, work specifically. You know, there has been criticism that they lessen security of the elections overall. Uh, would you mind giving us a refresher on the rules in Pennsylvania regarding mail-in ballots and those drop boxes? 
Yes, and this is actually a, a very important point in Pennsylvania in particular. Our election code gives a great deal of autonomy to our counties, which means that some counties have drop boxes. So when, when a voter requests their mail-in ballot, they receive that mail-in ballot, and they have a couple of options for returning that mail-in ballot. They can mail it through the U.S. Postal Service. If their county has drop boxes, they can submit their ballot through the drop box, or they can walk it into their county elections office. Um, but not all counties have drop boxes. And so um, the access to, to sending back your mail-in ballot actually varies across the Commonwealth. Most counties do, but not all. Um, and so <laughs> one variance that happens in the Commonwealth and can be confusing for voters. Yeah, and important to note, especially if you don't live in the state, it's good to know. Dr. Amy Weidstrom, thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. And now that we have, uh, that is a sort of a setup, we have live and in person, not on a time delay. Um, Karen Bosom from Chester County Voter Services. And Paige, why don't we go through some of the handouts here? So yeah, we all know this part and keep going. We have a little bit of, last month when we talked, um, Karen, we Carter Walker was here from VoteBeat and he talked an awful lot about trust in elections across Pennsylvania. And one of the things he says is he doesn't have to talk with Karen Barr so much because Chester County is pretty well handled. Um, and then, you know, as voter integrity keeps coming up and security and all and just getting out the vote, just wanted to make sure um, to have you help uh, get our sense of why uh, Carter Walker doesn't have to bother too much out here in Chester County. But let's talk about it. And Paige, what do we have on the next page here? So, um, yeah, let's talk about system integrity. And Karen, you know, can you share a bit about Voter Services' mission overall? And uh, just we have a few pages for you to share. So please go right ahead. Yes, yeah, so um, thank you for having me. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the, the biggest mission, um, obviously, from Voter Services is um, to have everyone participate in the process, if that would be from running for office to actually registering to vote, uh, participating then on Election Day with actually voting. Um, if that would be in person or by mail-in ballots, absentee, civilians, overseas, military, all scenarios, all voters, uh, we would like to offer them services and, and help in um, accomplishing those processes, um, which, as this is a presidential election year, our administration, um, election administration really focuses on volume and making sure we do a lot of outreach and education, including um making sure that people know that elections are safe and secure and, and can be trusted. And there's a lot of protocols and check and balances in place. Um, election years like next year, when there is a municipal election, our administration really is um, in a way a little bit more complicated from a, a administrative point of view where actually people can fill out petitions and run for office and have uh, campaign finance uh, that they need to file. So then we will be the entity where all of that can happen as well. Um, in the county of Chester, we have um, actually now more than 380,000 registered voters. I'm actually curious to see where that will end. Uh, my guesstimate has been close to 400,000. This county is growing. Um, we, we see an increase of uh, voter registrations, which is still open um, for a little bit, uh, not too long anymore, but we still have an increase in, in those applications. Um, so there's a lot of things that we we do in this county um, uh, from you know helping people understanding how the process works, education outreach. Um, we uh, make sure that we have certain processes in place and services um, such as drop boxes, secure process. And there is a lot of things um, actually in the law. There is also some things where um, county administration and the board of elections um, can um, um, you know choose what kind of um, uh, services maybe they would like to expand on um, and then we will um, as I work as, as a pleasure of the Board of Elections we will work together to see what the constituents here in Chester County um, you know the desire and how that could be uh, lawfully implemented.
There's a lot on your website about the areas that you serve. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the range of things that you do, Karen? Um, yes, yeah, so um, this actually is the uh, drop down bar in, in our websites. Uh, there is indeed a lot uh, we do. Campaign finance is on, on that list and candidates corner that are um, more things we will see next year where people actually run on a local uh, level. Um, you have all the townships and boroughs that have different um, positions uh, that are on the ballot. Also poll workers will be on the ballot next year. Um, we have uh, school districts that have uh, school directors on ballots. So that is all in the municipal uh, year, which are the uneven years. Um, we also have um, a lot of polling places uh, and uh, we have 230 polling places uh, here in this county. Um, they all need to be uh, staffed with poll workers. This year we are going in the direction of 2,000 uh, poll workers, I know 1,700 of those already uh, signed up or participated in, in uh, poll worker classes, which we also um, administer. Um, we uh, issue poll watcher and observer certif certificates for the parties uh, to um, be able to observe and, and watch the election process um, at the poll or at central scan. Um, there are so many things on our website, but yes, um, basically everything from running for office to administering the elections, making sure we have polling places, we have people that um, staff the polling places, that they are trained, um, that we have drop boxes available in the community, uh, that people can participate and make a voting plan and, and participate either by mail-in or, or absentee or in person. Um, and then in, in addition to all of that, Election Day itself, we have uh, two operations simultaneously. One would be the in-person voting operation with all the customer service that comes with that at the poll, as well as in our office. And we do have a 24-7 operation for our tabulation uh, of the actual mail-in and absentee ballots, which is... Uh, a very large operation that we currently for this upcoming election are going to staff with uh, the between 60 to 70 staffers every second and uh, day and night, which is um, actually currently um, all um, uh, volunteers from other departments. Um, uh. So we have a lot of uh, departments that are actually able to um, you know, from their the other directors, you know, my my peers and the other departments um, are willing to uh, provide um, staffing, uh, you know, good staffing ratios for election day and the night and the days thereafter. And um, if I can do a little shout out, um, what is unique in this county, the commissioners, the board of elections have approved for 2025 um, both election days to be a holiday. Um, so all oh. the other departments, non-emergency departments really? would be off so they can help me <laughs> um, at uh, the central scan operation. And I hope this is a, you know, a sign for all uh, counties and potentially school districts to uh, encourage that these days are um, important, obviously, in the community and, and we need a lot of help from poll workers to county staffers that help at Central Scan. So I think that's a very, very nice gesture and hopefully more people follow suit. I think that's terrific. I had not known that. Uh, so congratulations, it's high time, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, so you, you said that you have 1700 people in trainings for 2000 poll workers. So you're still looking to recruit folks? or our staff from the county able to fill in? What 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 do you need? Um, so actually this election is the election where everyone always loves to help, <laughs> right? Okay. We have eight, eight elections in a four year cycle and this is the election we normally are not necessarily um, really hurting for help. There is many elections, we do need more help. Um, right. We are, we are um, thinking that it, overall, at the polls, there in general, there would be around 2,000 workers. But um, last time I checked, 1,700 were signed up for classes. Um, there are a few classes that are, um, uh, you know, sa SAMI mandatory, which is for the judge of elections and the machine operators. But there are also poll workers that have done it many times or 
um, that are uh, might be greeters or helpers or um, helping with line management. And uh, potentially not everyone will go to class, but a large majority okay. actually already has signed up and has attended. Good. So what can you tell us about voter voting integrity in Chester County? Um, and anything else, again, this is a little bit more drilled down on your webpage about voting integrity and security and uh, complaints and all that sort of thing. And people who are on the Zoom, if you have questions now is your time to really jump in and, and ask so that we can uh, have a discussion with Karen. Yes, please. I I think I'm known right now for a person that would love to educate and, and do outreach. And I'm very transparent of all processes in the county. And uh, I uh, enjoy uh, making people uh, informed voters and hopefully positive liaisons in the community um, to actually talk about the, um, you know, the, the real um, the real processes in the election and not maybe the perceived um, processes. And there's a big difference between perception and reality. And that's what we have been um I don't want to say fighting, but um, we have had some challenges with that over the years that we would like to um, kind of be open about and explain more. And voting integrity and security is a big part of that. And that's why uh, the county, again, the Board of Elections um, decided to have certain areas of the election process on live stream cams, uh, mm. which actually you would see on this um, in the middle of this page. Um, the ballot intake area, that's the secure room where all the mail-in ballots are uh, received and kept uh, until they will be go to tabulation. That is live um, every day and night of the year, as well as the central scan area. And anyone that would look right now uh, actually would see that we are conducting training to all our county staffers uh, to be able to assist us on election day and be very well-informed workers. Uh, and then the third one is the equipment sensor. And if anyone would look at that area right now, um, you would be able to see that uh, we are doing logic and accuracy testing, um, which you can see from your couch, or you would be able to come and look at it in person. Um, one of the, the things that is not necessarily um, by code or law, but that this county um, has um, implemented for, for many elections right now is that we are open to the public uh, for some of those, um, you know, um, uh, transactions or uh, timeframes in the election, like logic and accuracy testing. We are open to the public, uh, central scan operation. We are open to the public, um, which is t technically unusual, but it also creates- say, a, a It's unusual, right? Moment. Being, it, yes. Does everybody in the country have live election cams in this area? Or are we especially secure on this one? So on not the, everyone has live cams, but on top of the live cams, the facilities, uh, the central scan facility and the facility, the um, uh, equipment center during logic and accuracy uh, testing is open to the public. Um, we really encourage people to be part of the election, right? Being a watcher, being an observer, be a poll worker, be an informed voter, be educated, um, go to your trusted resources, which for this county only really is the Department of State and Chester County um, regarding um, election matters. And if you really are educated and informed from those entities and be part of it, um, you will see um, a lot that you know, is is to people an eye opener, which is a good one, right? It's good to see how many check and balances are in place. It's good to see that in Chester County we test hundred percent all our voting um, equipment and system. Um, it's good to see that there is a very detailed chain of custody forms in place for every process, um, with so many seals and locks and and uh, separation of duties. Um, our staffers at the Dropbox, for example, do not have keys to even get into the compartments where the ballots are being safely stored behind lock and key and a seal. Uh, that key actually uh, for separation of duties is with the ballot collection staff. Um, so there is a lot of check and balances in place. And when you learn about all these different check and balances, it becomes uh, more and more clear that um, there is um, a definitely a very safe and secure elections with so many check and balances 
uh, body systems. Uh, nobody goes in our rooms and equipment center by themselves while uh, machines are being tested or after that. Um, there's just a lot in place that people might not be aware of. I have a question, Karen. Yes. Um, my question is, um, I know that, uh, in, am I correct in assuming in Chester County, there are not drop boxes in Chester, or there's one at the voting uh, at the government center, but is that the only drop box in Chester County? And if it is just, how do you feel about drop boxes in general? I know Delaware County does have drop boxes, so. Um, so we have in Chester County a drop box program, uh, which always deploys two weeks before the election, which starts okay. on October 22nd. Uh, we have traditionally had 13 locations and we uh, are continuing for this upcoming election with those 13 locations. Um, the Dropbox program in itself, um, it can be technically designed um, as, um, you know, I, I hate saying fancy, as the county would like it to be, um, but um, our county here in Chester County, um, our Dropbox program has been uh, mentioned even by our Secretary of State as uh, the golden standards of the election process in, in um, one of his meetings, where we actually have two staffers next to a box. The Dropbox has a motion detected camera. The camera has night vision. The camera has a battery. And there is a solar panel attached for recharging during the day. Um, the oh actual gosh. box is locked up in a secured pot overnight um, where, while the camera is still uh, running on motion detection. So in the morning, if we would check the cameras and a fly would go in front of it, <laughs> I mean, I hope that's all we see. And and uh, but we check uh, those obviously for the wow. to keep the integrity. We have a ballot collection staff. Uh, that has uh, body cameras that actually are law enforcement's body cameras um, that turn them on in the beginning of their routes and they are recording all the way until they are back into the secured ballot um, room in the uh, ballot intake area, which is live election cam section number one on the website. And that's where we would download all those uh, recordings for the, the actual ballot collection. Now, during the day, if there is an incident, um, and if you go to our website, there is a section about the drop boxes where everything is explained, um, and, and also even the scenarios, right? Things that might come up where um, first the first um, approach that we take here is education. If people do not know what they can or cannot do or what they lawfully are allowed to do and what not, if there is no knowledge of that, then it's difficult. The first layer is we have to continue to educate. And that is what we do at the Dropbox itself too. The um, staffer educates the voter to make sure it's their ballot, it's signed and dated, and then they can insert it. There is an educational flyer, there is uh, voted stickers. And if they do have ballots of their family member with them, they will be told that they could not insert that. Uh, explain the laws and many people are like, okay, I didn't know that, now I understand. So education mm -hmm. is, is a, you know, the forefront. Um, but then obviously some people do not listen and things might happen. <laughs> and that's why we have um, uh, other things in place, uh, which includes the uh, referrals to the district attorney's office and submitting of the video clips of those motion detection cameras and, and things like that, which has drastically reduced over the last few elections because people become more educated. And um, you cannot be mad at staffers about a law or something that is in place, right? That is something uh, hopefully everyone then would go to the legislators for um, to see if there could be some change in, in some of the things that the constituents uh, would like to see in the election uh, law in, in general. Thank you. I, I also had a question. Go ahead, sir. Um, yeah, it was great to visit Central Square, not once, but twice. I wish everyone could see how secure it is and all the things that you have in place. Um, you mentioned that in 2025, there would be, um, I guess it's a Pennsylvania state holiday for the election day. Do I have that correct? No, and the Board of Elections makes it a county holiday. For the county. primary and the general. Okay. Okay. 
So it's just the county. So the schools will be open unless they decide differently. Is that yes? And and I may hope the words will spread and people uh, were like, oh, that's a great idea. In order for us to have, um, uh, you know, enough helpers on election day and have our polling places accessible to us and things like that, uh, it would be wonderful, right? If we all collaborate and and more things are streamlines and schools might be closed and and other um counties maybe uh, have a desert holiday as well for i cannot speak about other counties but i'm sure other uh, election administrators like myself uh, would really like that <laughs> because it mm -hmm. helps right more people get the holiday pay and they can help us out on election day so and it's more if i understand correctly because it's not the state it's more that you would have perhaps more volunteers from the county to help yes Definitely. Okay. And right. also it helps us with freeing up the parking lots and then the helpers have a place to park. And like there's a lot of different uh, mm -hmm. angles in where this is very helpful to, to the county. Thank you. Okay. And Isaac, you have a question about the drop boxes. Are the drop boxes available every day starting October 22nd until Election Day? The drop boxes are open uh, Monday, yeah, Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday. There's just different hours, um, and there's also some evening opportunities, weekend opportunities. Um, on election day itself, the drop boxes um, in the entire county, the 13, are all open the same hours as the polling places, which is 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. when the polls are closing. Great. And just one follow up on that, um, because I um, am doing some nonpartisan civic engagement presentations coming up in the Kennett area. Um, the, I imagine I might get some questions about why are the Dropbox hours limited like that? Um, you know, uh, sometimes I maybe I don't get off of work until 6 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so I won't be able to make it. What What's a good response to that, explaining that because of the security of the Dropboxes, they need to close at night and or the ballots need to get picked up? What, what would you say to that? Um, correct. Um, so this county, um, uh, we put an emphasis on indeed security, them being staffed, them being locked up safe and secure at night. The ballots will all have to be collected and brought back to the county. Um, so we do not have a 24 seven model. Um, I, I don't know if I really can find even staffers who want to sit in the middle of the night next <laughs> to the drop box, but um, because we really have it staffed and, and we emphasize on safety and security. And I hope that um, during the course of the two weeks where we are open 14 days, right, every day of the week, that um, everyone hopefully has one day of a week to potentially um, go to one of those locations. Um, I, I mean, I, I would, everything would love to be 100% open all the time, but we are not compromising, um, you know, the safety, security, the well being of the staffers. Um, you know, it's going to be fall, it's going to be dark. We we supply them the solar lanterns and different things, but there's a whole lot of um, security aspects we need to consider. Thank you. And I just had one last question on that point. I think I misunderstood what you were saying about the staffers being at the, at the drop boxes. Could you explain that again? Yes, yeah, so every uh, drop box is um, manned by two staffers some uh, days we have three on location because we want to really have that educational components continue. Um, and then uh, on top of that, we have the solar um, and battery operated motion detection cameras where we get instant um, footage from um, all, all day long. Great. But yes, every Dropbox has staffers. Thank you so much. Other questions for Karen while we have her? I, I have. Joyce, I see you have a question. Great, welcome. Hi, thank you. And these may be so off track, but these are the concerns that I have about gerrymandering as far as voting is concerned and about voter suppression. How can we, what is it that is being done to help those two concerns? 
particularly voter suppression? Um, I actually see some uh, representative offices on, on the call as well, which uh, that might be more in their realm, right? Um, uh, I mean, voter services works with any um, township or um, borough that needs to do realignments. Uh, we have a few um, uh, actively on their way um, that uh, those entities have reached out to us. Um, for those processes, if if we really look at a larger scale, right, it's on a legislative, congressional, or senatorial um, uh, layers, those uh, are normally not handled by our office. They come really from uh, above us, and they um, and then we are being told indeed to potentially realign anything. Um, I know that doesn't really answer a lot of your questions. But I really see we in the end administer whatever we are told by law that we need to administer and how all those lines are um, established. But my office doesn't establish those lines initially. I understand. So, Joyce, your other question was about voter suppression, voter intimidation. Voter intimidation, yeah. Karen, can you speak to that as far as how what what, what gets reported? Um, I can um, talk a little bit about uh, voter intimidation. Uh, uh, a lot of things, like, for example, the drop boxes are on public property. And, and when you go to the store, you're walking on a parking lot or anything like that. So we know people have cameras. We can uh, all be recorded. So it's not necessarily any different than that. The difference comes when a voter, him or herself, uh, would feel uh, intimidated by an action and then that person itself will have to uh, report that. Uh, we strongly encourage that to go to 911. Um, that is the main entity where um, services could be provided either on a local level. Um, we also work closely with the DA. Um, there are uh, mechanisms in place through uh, the Department of State as well as through our website to um, uh, reports complaints more through an email system but if there is really something going on in the moment it should be reported in the moment because it's difficult to um, deal with things afterwards if you know not all the witnesses maybe are there anymore or um, the situation kind of changes <laughs> um, if you are concerned about the cameras on our drop boxes those are there purely for uh, the safety and security for the election process and uh, potentially records any um, activity that is unlawful. Um, so we would be able to refer that to the district attorney's office. Um, and, and in all scenarios, voter education is done first. So people are told what they can and cannot do. If they then still decide on doing something that's not appropriate, then obviously we as an election office have to take appropriate steps to make sure that those are being referred to the district attorney's office. Thank you. You're welcome. Joyce, do you have follow-up on that? No, I just, you know, in thinking, you know, like I think about my, my, my mother votes in Bucks County, which is the, um, if for those that don't know, is the home of the Ku Klux Klan. And she wanted to go to the polls the last time to vote. And it was just a scary situation. It was not very pleasant. It was, I mean, when you talk about intimidation, it's just enough to keep, what's enough to keep people away or afraid to go in to vote. So, I mean, we braved our way through and she, she's 90, she was 90, 90, I think, 91 or so at the time. And um, I, but it was just, a, it's kind of a scary situation. May, may I maybe a response to some of the things that, you know, we do have in place at the polls or, or what kind of relationships we have created. Um, for many years now, the departments, my departments uh, works very closely with the party um, offices, the chairs of the parties in Chester County. 
where we actually establish uh, relationships and really have good connections on election day where we openly communicate if there is inappropriate behavior by individuals that do electioneering at the poll. So if there is something going on at the poll that is inappropriate behavior that makes people feel unwelcome or um, the, the voting uh, polling place is not accessible in a way that it should be, um, those reports come in and then we will work directly with the parties to rectify that. In addition, um, in federal election years, uh, the county provides training to the constables, uh, which we also have conducted this year. Um, this county has a Roma program where we have, um, it's almost like a liaison from my office, um, has um, like five or six judges of elections under their supervision, not necessarily to tell them what to do, but to be there for them, to support mm -hmm. them, to help polling if needed, provide additional information, mitigate scenarios. Um, and then on top of that, this county has a, a technicians program. Uh, they are all county employees. Um, they also carry a 911 radio. They are directly communicating with the um, incident command center that we have fully um, in, um, in place uh, on election day, um, where we have a representative of the sheriff's office, DA's office, solicitor's office, uh, solicitor's office, county commissioner's office, my office, Department of Emergency Services, security, and local law enforcement. So we do have that incident command center in place, and we have 10 zones in the county that we can communicate directly with. Um, so there's a lot of layers. And in addition to that this year, um, I invited uh, CISA, the federal government, to come in and do a special training for our poll workers purely on um, different incidents and scenarios and how to deal with that. Um, so there is a lot of layers in place that um, I may hope something you have described would never happen in this county. And God forbid it does. We directly have things in place that either local or all the way up, uh, we directly can deal with that because that is not acceptable. Thank you. Amazing, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Every year, more and more and more. Yeah. Um, we're going to uh, send the Dropbox comments to you. Actually, I'm going to ask staff. And Isaac found that there's a couple of things. I don't know if you can see the comments, Karen. Um, something a date is uh out of date on the dropbox stuff it must be for the oh primary election and then do you have a pdf version of the drop-off locations you could put online so people can print them out we'll look at it after we um, yeah we'll we send it over yeah okay and Isaac, the dropbox yeah. link i don't think is live yet it's the satellite offices voter registration and mail and absentee voting i i will look at the dropbox section thank you so much yeah we'll send the comments over i think i noticed that yeah Good, good. Does anybody else have broad questions for Karen overall? I thought it was interesting if you take the next couple of slides, I think just to look at who, uh, how many people you are gearing up for. And I know there's not a comparison as far as turnout. I'm just amazed by the number of people that you are gearing up for Karen as far as voter voting integrity. Do you want to, these were on the website as well. Can you tell us what we're seeing? Um, the screen that is up right now is the April 2024 election. And we were geared up for this to be also um, a pretty large election, um, which, you know, the numbers reflect a higher participation, but there was also not the highest participation maybe because a lot of things were kind of already decided on, <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. the primary election is, uh, we either had a Democratic ballot and a Republican ballot and there were not a lot of choices in general. Now, uh, obviously there are some offices that might have choices, but if there is less to vote on, probably there is a little less of a turnout. And by the time it was here in Pennsylvania, there was not a lot left on the presidential raise itself anymore. Sure. Um, so it's and kind then, of difficult to really look at the general from this statistical basis. So for the general, we um, we know a lot of people are going to participate. Hey, hit the next page. Yeah. There's just so many more people you're preparing for. Correct. Um, and the next page actually is a it's a whole different picture, right? It's because oh, it was go back one page. 20, that one. 
it was the 2020 November election. And in 2020, we had uh, mail-in ballots actually only for the second time, uh, no excuse mail-in ballots, for the second time in the Pennsylvania uh, history. And we also had a lot of people participate by mail-in ballot due to um, COVID. Um, we do not have a real good statistical data set for an, uh, a, an election cycle, including a presidential, because we cannot really go off of these, this data to be able to um, have an idea of what's going to um, happen this next election. We see there that around 150,000 people participated, or actually the ballots was tabulated, uh, through a mail-in uh, ballot, mail-in or absentee ballot, which is very large. We also see that after COVID kind of um, went down, um, that more people returned back to the poll. And we have seen that in our application numbers. Um, mm -hmm. I do think that we are going in the direction of 100,000. If we would go over that, uh, it's questionable. I really think we are going to drop at least by 50,000 mail-in ballots because now we are in the 80,000s. Mm -hmm. um, the first large batch that was mailed out to the public on um, September 27th, if I'm not mistaken, that's when we started mailing them out. It was in the 70,000s. Um, mm -hmm. So we are gearing up for a large amount of mail-in ballots, potentially lower than last presidential. What we really are gearing up for is that more people return to the poll. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we have talked with the party uh, representation about uh, some uh, creative options of line management. I think they want to be a partner with us, um, uh, you know, at, at the outside of the polls to, to work um, uh, with the county. And we also have worked a lot with the poll workers. Um, mm -hmm. In-person voting has been a tradition in the States for a long, long time, right? Um, but not necessarily a whole lot of uh, modernization was um, put into in-person voting, which I actually makes my projects for 2023 last year to really look at uh, what are the inconveniences and conveniences for poll workers and how can we streamline things for them. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean less paperwork, but how do we present it? In which kind of formats can they find it? What kind of freedoms can we give them in line management? How can they break up poll books if necessary in different configurations and so on? Um, so we have worked with polling uh, places and poll workers to try to make certain things more convenient for them. Uh, but mm -hmm. in-person voting is... Uh, it's a lot of paperwork, a lot of processes, um, you know, in between um, people that might need to do an affirmation or people that need to do a provisional or people that want to surrender their ballots. There is just a lot of special scenarios that these poll workers have to be trained at, and that costs time. Well, right. Thank you very much. I know, uh, Isaac, you had a question about access. Language. language. Access. Yeah. Isaac? That's just a general question and more, I guess, more about election day itself and the polling places. What can voters who don't speak English as a primary language expect to encounter? So language access is important to me. Obviously, you can hear I have an accent. Right? So, um, <laughs> and I actually was an assistant director in Berks County for many years, and we had uh, bi bilingual poll workers. Um, it's actually mandatory in Berks by the Department of Justice. So I'm familiar with um, the challenges um, it brings and the, um, uh, the integration of uh, bilingual poll workers into the um, poll worker um, environments, and uh, that that takes a lot of effort, which I started many years ago when I came here, um, really to um, uh, basically state, how are you going to um, help people in the most efficient way in customer service if you know as a poll worker team that you have bilingual names and none of you speak a certain language? I said, every polling place, the poll worker team needs to be comprised of a similar configuration as the community that comes out to vote. So I really emphasize that for many, many elections. And I um, gravitate a lot of times to the poll worker volunteer list 
where languages actually are listed. So we can include more bilingual um, um, uh, speaking people onto the boards. And there and it comes with some uh, challenges. Uh, you know, some polling places have had the same five poll workers for the last 20 years. And they are very close knit, and it's a it's a cultural uh, change and some uh, challenges and accept, uh, expectations that I have. And actually, um, because I have an accent and I originally am not from the United States, it also became easier for me to talk about it and actually tell them if I come and I speak Dutch only, and I tell you my name, and you cannot ask me for my ID. How are you going to deal with me, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. These are the challenges I gave the poll workers or in poll worker training. Like, no, you cannot ask for my ID. No, you cannot uh, tell, put me aside and say, I will deal with you later because I don't know what to do right now. Um, and that also comes with, um, I use the people first language skills which are designed for ADA, um, um, you know, definitely for the access, ADA language access. Um, I use that to kind of migrate to the uh, language access that people want to be treated as the person itself, not their translator, not their, um, you know, other special capabilities, which is to me, it's not a, um, a disability, it's not a disability, it's just another ability. <laughs> And um, so I, I kind of try to make them aware of all these different things. On election day, I hope over the last few years, people really have been encouraged to have poll workers, um, you know, a mixed group of people working at their polling place. Um, it seems like you are in the Canada's area. I would love to partner with you or be present at any outreach events to encourage people to be part of the team uh, and to be to be poll workers in their communities. Uh, people are allowed to bring anyone with them to assist them in the process. Um, unfortunately, there is paperwork for it, but that is to make sure that the voter really, and, and I think it's also a way how we explain it. If I need to have an interpreter with me, I as a voter am going to be okay with compromising my secrecy to votes mm -hmm. and me being okay with that i need to declare that in writing to the county or in paper and writing and that is how we should explain it right uh, voting is secret everyone can have an assister we just need to make sure that the voter was okay with giving up the secrecy of their voting process because now they have somebody translate and, and that are all different layers we try to explain uh, in detail in poll worker training. Um, I know we are not a bilingual county. Um, I know there's a need for more outreach in bilingual areas. And I um, I'm, I continue to partner with people and, and I would love to see if there's other things how we can um, encourage people uh, to be part in their community and to be part of the poll worker team. That's really the biggest issue, that people don't necessarily feel comfortable to singularly step into a group of people that have done it for a long, long time. So I'm trying to change that culture. Hmm. Thank you for trying <laughs> and <we'll> keep going. <laughs> As we get closer to our noon time, if you have other questions or comments, please uh, make them be known. We've got Karen until one o'clock at the latest. The other slides that we have here, Paige, let's quickly go through. Oh, well, here we go, Karen. We know these dates, any questions? If I may make a comment in general um, uh, regarding, uh, um, I, I love that people want to educate people and that they use the trusted resources. Um, we just need to make sure and be vigilant that nobody really alters any of our documents or um, what I mean with that is I have seen a lot of people use sample ballots as materials to do to send out for um, campaigning and they pre 
color in the ovals, make it a sample ballot, but to the voters, it doesn't appear as such. And then I had voters come to the front desk saying, okay, this is my ballot, no envelope, no nothing, no track mark. Uh, we really need to be vigilant and continue educating. If there is any time, any mailer, um, any email that comes out from a third party that potentially doesn't provide a clear picture or understanding to people, um, I normally, as soon as I'm aware of it, I try to work with the entity that send it out to see if they can rectify it or change their uh, potential um, you know, behavior of what they send out. Um, because I really would like people to have the accurate information and that our documents are not being altered to mislead people. You must get so much every single day, Karen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, and then again, we just have a few things that keep people from voting here. These are not Karen's slides. They were just to uh, generate more discussion. So yeah, the fact is voter engagement is a huge issue. Uh, when you look at the percentage and did vote at the last general election, it was 83, 82% in Chester County, which was terrific. Mm -hmm. um, but again, there's always more work to do. What else we have here on the slides? Mm -hmm. And you've seen these before, what keeps people from voting. But Karen, you're really trying to work on so much as far as getting deadlines out clear, making the polling places clear to people. Lines in Chester County, uh, I mean, you must hear about that. Uh, correct ID, um, provisional ballots, I mean, getting help, all kinds of things keep people, but especially the day off or just getting there in some cases or the intimidation factor with some. What else, again, just trying to get younger people voting. I think uh, the universities are doing quite a bit in places of faith and getting out more and there's a lot of interest so that should make a big difference and again schedules places questions answered fake and true information us getting a ride and getting off of the shift so we know all kinds of reasons people say are for not voting so how can we overcome those again we talked about some access issues finding polling places, and again, being able to get off of work to vote, whether that's in a, a drop box or in person. So working to improve. And actually, uh, our voices should be heard. I saw that Cheryl Miles was on the call before. I wasn't sure if anybody else wanted to talk about what our voices should be heard is trying to do. Is there anybody who could speak to our voices should be heard still on the call? I can speak a little bit, Cheryl, oh, much more you. eloquently than I, since I'm a, <laughs> a member. He was here, but she must have dropped off. Thanks, Joyce. Yeah, yeah my pleasure. So as part of the, uh, the Black Women of Chester County in Action, this was a group that initially was started by funds through the Women and Girls Fund. Uh, and it was based on the um, health economy of Black women in Chester County. Uh, as published through the Blueprint Report. So one of the subcommittees in that group is um, our voice should be heard. So as part of that, we have uh, initiatives that really speak out to, um, to all people on why voting is important, why that the commitment to the community is important. Um, I know that we help with Rock the Vote and um, other initiatives that just speak to the value uh, and importance of voting. Thanks, Joyce. Mm -hmm. More to come, good stuff. And I think at this point we've talked, uh, has some good questions and answers and it's only five minutes left. So I'm thinking that it's really time to just say that if you need help engaging people, we still have many grants it's sure. just a one page, fill out the form, email it to us, just give us name, rank, and serial number. And it's got to be for a nonprofit or religious institution. So please, um, we uh, have had some 
really good mini grants we've been able to make to help people get and people engage with voting and voting, Karen, voting could overall. I also, hmm? Could I also say that we, in the Rock the Vote initiative, we learned that um, many people with felonies are, they're even afraid to fill out the application because they just don't feel like they're going to be able to, they, they feel like as if they're going to be denied the privilege of voting, which is not true. Right. So that language around that, I think is really important, especially for some that serve the audiences that are, you know, economically uh, un not privileged and, you know, just the service populations that we work with. They just need to know that, uh, what, the, what the rules are. Let those voices be heard. Yeah, yeah. I thank you all for everything you're doing to help get people engaged in voting and to make sure that our votes count and uh, there's integrity in the voting system and security for all people who are voting as well as helping as volunteers and paid staff. So it is a, a big time. And Karen, thank you for everything that you're doing through voter services and uh, getting everybody rallied and ready to ready to roll and it's in process. So. Uh, thank, thank you for, you for joining us me. today. Any final, final questions? And we know your email, so we know where to find you too. So Yes, and um, uh, we all are kind of gearing up for um, this presidential election, but I do want to uh, mention, especially people on the call today, uh, probably are very much engaged in their communities and uh, want to provide more information and access to voting. Um, my team has an outreach um, and education components to it. We actually have a special section on our website where people can request us to be present at an event with whatever it might be, right? Maybe a ballot marking device for people that are visual impaired, or maybe just to explain about voting or telling people in a nursing home how they can participate and meeting, um, a request can be submitted and according to our, you know, election calendar, what we can and cannot um, do, but we try to engage as much as we can. Some things we don't know unless we are um, told that they exist or invited or, or can you be there? So we would like to um, have more and more activities where we can participate. Thank you for everything you're doing to get people engaged. We're Great, grateful for everything. It's just Chester County, you've really thought it through over years and learned and learned and continuous learning. So we will get it, Thank we got you. it right. We are fortunate. Thank you. Uh, Thank one you. more thing, I'd love to have a copy of that page of the vote, not the people with the voting shirts and the people that didn't vote. Sure, you we'll send it out to everybody. Okay, thank you. Got it. Yep. The whole PowerPoint will go out and Joyce will send you that little JPEG just for you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very Karen. much. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Karen. Appreciate Thank everything you. you're doing at the track. Thank you, everybody. Get out the vote.